Hello everyone, my name is Marco Nikdao and I'm a clinical nurse 3 from UC San Diego Health from 5 West Trauma Step Down Unit and today I'll be sharing with you my evidence-based project entitled Key Pin It Clean, an Evidence-Based Practice on Pin Site Care. First, here are the members of my team headed by UCSD Head of Orthopedic Trauma, Dr. Alexander Schwartz, our Director for Trauma, Dr. Todd Casantini, Clinical Nurse Educator, Jessica Corley, Lillian Kanamo, my mentor, and Dr. Judy Davidson, our faculty liaison. And of course, my amazing 5 West team. My project wouldn't be so successful without their help and support. I was a graduate of last year's San Diego Evidence-Based Practice Institute, where in my project won the Best Pico Question Award, and I was also the recipient of the Dean Barb Taylor Dissemination Grant. Since my project is evidence-based, I'm using the 8 A's model, from assessing to advancing and adopting. Being a level one trauma hospital, we cater to multiple trauma cases all over San Diego, from 150 to 200 cases a month. And some patients require the application of external fixator for the management of complex fractures. However, UCSD had no written guidelines or protocol on how to care for pin sites and providers giving orders not specifying what kind of cleansing agents and dressings to be used. And when we try to clarify it with them, we get different and conflicting answers that brought more confusion to the nursing staff. Also, there was no specific tab in our electronic medical records for pin site care documentation. My PICO question is, among UC San Diego 5 West trauma step down patients with external fixators, how does performing pin site care protocol compared to the current practice of no protocol affects pin site care completion and staff competency? These are the literatures that I have collected to support my project. First is a clinical trial done by Mickey Patterson, a nurse practitioner from University of Massachusetts who tested seven different pin site care interventions in two level one trauma hospitals with 92 participants. She concluded that the use of half strength hydrogen peroxide mixed with equal amount of normal saline and covered with dry dressing is the best practice in performing pin site care due to no to low a reported infection. CK Chen, an orthopedic surgeon from Malaysia and publishes work in Journal of Orthopedic Surgery, did a comparative trial between normal saline and iodine in cleansing the pin sites. The test shows that using iodine has no advantage compared to normal saline. That's the reason why normal saline can be used if patient has known sensitivity to hydrogen peroxide. In a prospective randomized study done by Turkish orthopedic surgeon named Ali Kavusoglu, suggested that cleaning pin site does not require sterile technique. Rather, it can be done using a clean technique. When performing pin site care, it is not necessary to remove intact crust since it acts as a biological dressing that protects the site from any bacterial contamination. This was suggested by Simon Britton, a trauma doctor from United Kingdom based on his clinical trial among his 92 patients with external fixator. Nicholas Kasmer, an orthopedic hand and microvascular surgeon from University of Utah, mentioned in his article, Strategies in Trauma and Limb Reconstruction, that in his hospital, they are using half-strength hydrogen peroxide mixed with equal amount of normal saline. He also suggested that every institution should adopt a uniform pin site care protocol that works for their patients to prevent confusion and lack of confidence from the nursing staff. Applying and implementing. For my project, we are measuring two outcomes, staff competency 
through pre- and post-test, and pinside care, staff compliance, through chart review in our electronic medical records. Staff education is a bit challenging because of the pandemic. Initially, we were planning to do proper pinside care teaching as part of our annual skills lab. Instead, I created a PowerPoint presentation that I presented in one of our unit-based practice meeting. I also did some teaching during shift huddles, some one-on-one -on -one and group teaching. I gave out some pamphlets and I posted some quick reference guides within our unit. This picture was taken during one of our group teaching I conducted for the nursing staff. And on the left is the replica of the tibia bone with external fixator that I created and used for all my teaching. And these are the pamphlets I distributed within our unit to the nursing staff for their free time reading. This is the sample of the Pinside Care pamphlets. It includes the guidelines and nursing considerations on how to care for patients with external fixators. From the beginning of my project on February to July 2020, Five West Trauma PCU admitted 13 patients with external fixators that required pinsite care. Three patients were excluded due to pinsites were covered and can only be accessed by the providers during OR washout. And from that 10 patients baseline data, there were total of 66 number of patient days combined, but only 17 days has been site care documentation or 26%. For proper documentation, the UCI and UCSD Shared Governance Committee approved my proposal to add a specific pinsite care intervention tab to our electronic medical records. This way, we can document an easier to track care. To test staff competency, a five item knowledge based pre and post test were given to the nursing staff through Qualtrics, a web based survey tool. 62 registered nurses participated out of 64 or 98.4%, excluding myself, and one registered nurse was on a military deployment during the course of my project. With the help of my mentor and other stakeholders, we created hospital-wide nursing guidelines that was approved and uploaded to the UC San Diego Nursing Resource website. Now, the use of half-strength hydrogen peroxide mixed with equal amount of saline solution and covered with dry dressing became the standard in the whole UCSD health system in caring for patients with external fixator. This is a part of the Pinside Care Nursing Guidelines that are accessible to all the UC San Diego staff. And this is the quick reference sheet, which is also part of the Pinside Care Nursing Guidelines. Analyzing with empirical outcomes. After staff education, post-test shows 4.9 average score compared to 3.3 pre-test average score. This proves that staff is more knowledgeable on how to perform proper pinsite care. I did multiple chart reviews, post intervention, and staff education. From August to October of last year, Five West Trauma Step Down Unit took care of eight patients with external fixators. And from that eight patients, there were 35 total number of patient days with pinsite care documentation out of 35 days or 100%. This graph shows a huge improvement on pinsite care documentation and compliance from 26% to 100% since we added that specific tab in our electronic medical records. 
it is easier for the nursing staff to chart and prompts them to do the care. Advancing and adopting with dissemination and project maintenance. Since after I graduated from San Diego Evidence-Based Practice Institute last November, I'm happy and it's a rewarding feeling that I'm able to make a change in our own hospital and be able to share my project to other institutions. So far, I have presented to three nursing conferences in Reno, Nevada, University of Southern Indiana, UC Davis, again here today at San Diego Chapter Association of Clinical Nurse Leaders, and one more scheduled presentation next month at UC San Diego Evidence-Based Practice and Research e-conference. For my project maintenance, we're still planning to do proper pinside care teaching during our annual skills labs for the new nurses in our unit. And recently, which I consider this as a huge development, with the support of Dr. Schwartz, the head of orthopedic trauma, UC San Diego approved the pinside care order set that I created. Providers can now just type in pinside care and the corresponding cleansing agent and dressings are already included in the order. This made it easier for the providers and promote consistency of care. And here are the references that I used for my evidence-based project. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions or concern, please feel free to reach out to me. Again, this is Marco Nick Dow. Hope you guys have a good day.